Good morning, y'all. I'm Paul, Sarah's behind the camera, and we're Go With The Flow Couple. And today, instead of exploring our own backyard, we're exploring our front yard. Behind me is an area where we have uh, done some work already. We're putting in a flower bed. And I wanna put in a native Florida flower bed. One reason for that is I think native plants are really neat. They're, they come in all kinds of different varieties. And two, they're easier to take care of. If they're native, they're drought resistant or drought tolerant, they're disease resistant, and they can handle the Florida heat. So I've already cleared out this area, as you can kind of see, and I've put down some mulch with some pine needles. Another reason I'm using pine needle mulch is because we've got pine trees in it. That way when the needles fall, I only have to rake them back into the bed. So today, I've been looking for some things. It's early spring, and so our rainy season's about to start, and that's why I wanna put the plants in now. And we are going to Sweet Bay Nursery over in Parrish, Florida. They have all native plants. And so we're gonna take a drive over there. We're gonna take uh, Katie, the Acadia, and let her try pulling a trailer for the first time. And we're gonna see what we can find over there at Sweet Bay Nursery. So come along with us on our adventure as we explore our backyard to fill up our front yard. Okay, so as you can see, uh, Sweet Bay Nursery has a variety of native Florida plants, and right now we are in search of some beauty berries. Beauty berry is going to be kind of our main plants, kind of our focus plants in the middle, so I think I'm just going to go ahead and get the larger ones. We did find our kunti plants that we want. Okay, now we're looking for sage and Elliot's. Love grass and sage is what we're looking for next. There it is. Now, is there different varieties? Because one of them, look, the bigger ones look lighter. Or are they the same, just younger plants? Younger plants. But there's Elliot's. Now, Elliot's comes up and it's got kind of a kind of a yellowish, creamy, creamy looking flower. And then there's also the purple love grass. We're just gonna have the, the reddish color. So which one do you like? Or we could do a, a combination, we could do half and half. Okay, let's do that because I can't decide. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> There's the tropical sage. So I just picked up two of the one gallon wild coffee like he wanted. Close to a verbena. Yeah. And if they had any more of that the Indian blanket. Did we get everything when it was on your list? Yes. The, the aster plant, we got those? We got the asters. We got the big, the large asters, and then I also got um, two of the bunching asters. Okay. Well, we're here. We've wrapped up our plant shopping at Sweet Bay Nursery in Parrish, Florida. Yeah, it looks like you're leaking a little bit. <laughs> yeah, just a little. Uh, it's it's bright and sunny out here and it's a beautiful day 
But we spoke with the owner, Tom, and he told us that Sweet Bay Nursery has been in business here for 26 years. They started out strictly wholesale, uh, then they went to retail, and now they do just a little bit of a mixture of both. Tom and the rest of the folks that work here are very helpful. Uh, with the number of plants that they have here in the, the large area, it's hard to find what you're looking for unless you know where it is. So they were very nice, walked around with us and pointed everything out. They have carts for you to pick up all of your purchases, and then you go to check out was nice and quick. And so now we're gonna leave here, head back towards Lake Wales, stop for some lunch, stop at the winery. Bunker Hill. At Bunker Hill, and then head home. And we've got a lot of work ahead of us planting all these plants in the flower bed. So we went yesterday and got the plants for this bed here in the front of the house. They're all native plants. And so today what I'm gonna be doing is we're gonna take all the mulch, all the pine mulch out of here. We're just gonna rake it out of the way. We're gonna take the plants and lay them out and set them out where we think we wanna put them. And then after we finish with that, get them all marked, then I can start planting the plants. So let's get busy. So I know the pine straw didn't come from our three pitiful little trees, so where did you get some of the pine straw from? Man, these trees aren't pitiful. <laughs> I, bought the, I bought the pine straw at one of the local nursery supply places. Okay, so I noticed that you had a tape measure set out on the road, so what's the tape measure for? Well, I just want to kind of get an idea of how long the total bed is and then I know how many plants I've got that I'm going to put in each row. So I just want to put kind of some even spacing on some of them just to make it look more uniform. But I'm also going to group some things and put some lower plants in the front, some higher plants in the back, so that you can see different levels of plants. So hopefully when it's all done, you'll be able to see all the, all the different colors of everything that's out here. And what we just finished doing was getting the majority of the weeds out of the bed so that we don't have to worry about weeds for a little while. So we have a basic plan of what we're going to do here. Uh, the letters represent different plants that we've got and the kind of squiggly lines here represent the trees that are already in place. So I'm just going to be spacing things out. I'm going to start with the uh, wild coffee because it's going to go closest to the road. It's the shortest of these plants that I've got. And so we'll start with that and we'll set those up. Then we'll set the larger plants in between the trees and then we'll go from there. Okay, so what we've done now is we've brought all of our plants out and we've put them in the bed where we kind of want them. And we've moved them around just a little bit so that we've got an, a variety of colors and a variety of sizes as you go through the bed. There are some of these plants that are gonna stay fairly short and compact like the coffee. They probably will not get much higher than about this when they're full grown. And then the flowers here in the middle between the coffee, most of them are gonna stay about the same size. We've got the Black Eyed Susans. We've got the um, Indian Blankets. They'll get probably about two and a half to three feet tall. And they're gonna give a splash of yellow and red color, kind of a mixture. Uh, the ones in the very, in the middle, will get really tall. That's the beauty berries. And then the coon teas, which are every other one, they won't get as tall, but they're gonna spread out real wide. And they'll keep putting off pups as they grow. And they will, uh, over time, they'll get up to about four feet tall. So you'll have a background of green with some splash of color from the, the beauty berries. It's a bright reddish purple berry in the fall. And then in between, you've got these scarlet sages or um, tropical sages that are gonna be tall, a little bit spindly, but they're gonna have that bright red pop of color. 
So hopefully we'll have a good mixture of color in here. And as I said, all of these are Florida native plants. They all like dry climates. They all like full to partial sun. So they're going to have a lot of sun in the morning. Midday they'll have a lot of sun. And then in the afternoon they'll get to cool off a little bit when our neighbor's tree is in full uh, leaf. So our next step, we're going to get some potting soil and put it in a wheelbarrow. I'm going to start digging holes for all these plants. We're going to drag the water hose over. We're going to mix a little bit of uh, potting soil in the holes along with some miracle Grow or other kind of jump start liquid fertilizer to get them going. And then we'll water everything in, put the mulch back in place. So we have our potting soil all mixed up here. And the reason why we're so what, well anyway, what Paul is doing right now is taking some of that potting soil and put, placing it, are you placing it down the bottom or on the top? Uh, around the sides of the plant. Okay, so when he gets a plant in the hole, he puts the potting soil around the edges of the plant. And of course afterwards you're going to make sure that you give the plant a little drink of water because he just came out of the pot and it's going to be a little bit of shock going in the ground. So tell me what kind of tool you're using there. These are post hole diggers and they just, because they make a nice round hole as they dig and you can, and you kind of kind of measure with them at the same time, they make really good, a really good tool for digging one gallon size pot holes. Doug, I'm taking the plants out of the pot and just sticking them in the ground and Paul's coming back and putting more sand in. Yeah, what you need to do is make sure that the, that the top of the plant or the crown of the plant that was at the same, at the same height as the top of the ground as it was in the pot. So sometimes you need to put a little Put a little potting mix around them just to give it some extra nutrients, hold some moisture. And the other important thing is that you pack down around the side of it because you don't want any air pockets around the roots. Because roots don't like growing through the air. A lot of times, especially with blueberry plants, citrus plants, we do what we call mudding them in. So we'll take and as we're as we're putting the soil in, we'll pour water in around them, kind of turn the dirt into mud and make sure it gets out all the air pockets. But these the roots are in a pretty good ball of soil already, so I'm just packing them in real good and making sure that oops, your tree's <laughs> in the way. And making sure that we've got them packed in good all the way around so there's air pockets around it. And as I said before, we'll take a rake, we'll smooth off all, all this excess dirt when we're done, Oops, all the excess mom. sand, and then we'll bring all that mulch back in place and scatter it around. And because we've put all these plants in, we should have a little bit of extra mulch. So our, our mulch layer ought to be a little bit thicker. So we're almost done. We've got the back row of 10 plants to do and about four down the middle and we'll be all finished. And it's been in just one Sunday afternoon. That's right. 
So the last thing we're doing is um, putting the pine straw back in place. And tell me the purposes of the pine straw. Okay, tell me. Pine the straw is a high, highly acid mulch. It's a high acid mulch. Most of these plants that we put in like a high acid in their soil. And so the pine straw not only keeps some moisture in when it rains, but also the pine straw will keep out some of the weeds from coming up. Not gonna keep all of them out, but it does keep them down a little bit. And since we have pine trees here, as the needles fall, I just have to rake them into the bed. All right, so we are finished up with our landscape project for today. I know the title of our video is Explore Your Own Backyard, but today we're doing our front yard. And so as you can see, we've got the plants all back in. We're in and we've got the mulch back in place and we've cleaned up and we are now ready to take a break. The last thing that we're gonna do with this project is Sarah's gonna print out pictures and information about each one of these plants that we have. I'm gonna make some signs, put it in some plexiglass covers, and that way we'll be able to educate the neighbors and other people who come by. So until later, we say, bye y'all. Hey y'all, thanks for watching our video. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel, The Go With The Blow Couple. Bye y'all.